Hi, I'm the Accidental Brewer, and I'm Joe, and what are you? You're also the Accidental Brewer, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so today we are looking at the beer that we made. Uh, this is the Russian Imperial Stout that we started out with. Um, it didn't quite go as high of a gravity as we wanted it to, but uh, it wasn't quite finished last time when we wrapped it over to this bucket. I think it's done today, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this top, and we are going to see if it's finished. And if it is, then we're going to bottle today, and we'll show you that process. But maybe it's not going to be. We're prepared for it, so hopefully it is. Plus, I'd kind of like to try this beer, like this month. <laughs> um, let's see if I can get this off. We do have water boiling in the background just in case. Um, so the stuff that we have here is sanitizer liquid, uh, ball caps and sanitizer, priming sugar, but everything that's on this table has been dipped. In. So I got that lid off, and now we can check and see if our gravity is correct. As you can hear behind me, I have the water boiling for the uh, priming sugar. to see if that's going to work out well. And I'm hoping that I'll have less with this new hydrometer and uh, two combo. So making some noise, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay, let's see what we're going to. And I probably just stirred up the least. Well, that's floating. That was a double me. I like to let drip back in. So don't ever let the stuff drip back in. Alright, so it's still right at 1.03. Looks like <laughs> the gravity went up. But I'm going to say that's done. I'm going to say that's as much as it's going to be doing. Because it's been two weeks and it hasn't gone down any. Um, Alright, so I'm going to taste it now. See if it's any good. Um, and then we're going to figure out what the ABV of it is. But we can go ahead and uh, do some priming sugar. So while I'm preparing to taste this, what we can do, and I should have put that in the bottling bucket, I should have done that not to do that. Now what we can do is we can cut this open, so um, I need to go sanitize, well no you don't have to sanitize this, so go ahead, cut this open, no you don't have to. So what we can do is we're going to cut this open, and is going to put this in the water that's uh, getting ready to boil, and then we are going to, the whole thing. yep the whole thing. And then we are going to um, stir that in, let that magical sniffing glass appears. And we're going to see how this tastes. It's still a little hoppy, but now that it's had some um, time to age, a lot of that hoppiness has gone out of it. And it is more of the what I expect from a beer. So that's good. Let's see what the original gravity is on this. Which I think is going to be um, higher than what I expected because I put all that uh, extra DMA in there. But I did not uh, heat it up and put it in like I was supposed to. Which was dumb of me. It was very, very dumb of me. Um, so, a little longer than a few minutes later. According to my brew sheet, this is about a 5.25% ABV. Not nearly as high, as high as I wanted it to get. 
Uh, especially for an Imperial Stout that's pretty low. Um, clearly, I didn't do this right, but it still tastes pretty good, and that's all that matters to me. Uh, so now it's time to, um, you know, rack it over, add the priming sugar in, and uh, let's, you know, get it bottled. We do have a bottling bucket here. Um, I've already attached the bottling wand to the bottom just because, I don't know, I thought that would be a good idea. It might not have been as good of an idea as I thought it was, but uh, we'll see. Um, all right. Turn the wrong one off. Just look at me. All right, so. Um, we have, bottle, we have uh, hot water here that we are going to put down here in the bottom of the bottling bucket. Um, it's about two cups. It should not affect the ABV very much in a five gallon uh, thing, but in a five gallon brew, it shouldn't affect the ABV very much to have two cups of water. However, um, this water also has sugar in it, and that should be enough to help us carbonate our beer. That's what I'm hoping anyways. Uh, I did forget one thing. <laughs> I forgot this. This right here. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So now we are going to move our beer from one bucket to another. And I think I'm going to move this around over that side because that is likely the way that's going to have to happen. This guy in here. All right, so I'm going to carry this over here, and you move the chair around over there. Okay, you may be asking yourself, why is this dude using a racking cane with beer? And uh, the reason is, this is what I have. I don't have a um, double bottle or double bucket set up with a fermenter that has a spigot in it. So I'm using my, my wine making supplies to also make beer. Um, which shows that you can do both. You can have both kind of set up and make them do, but I do have a bottling bucket and I want to be able to use that for my five gallons. So um, that's what we're doing here. Um, Several bad puns later. All right, so we're gonna be bottling here in a few minutes. So this is a gravity fed setup. We're about ready to bottle. And basically all you do is um, you turn it so that your spigot is able to pour out and then you turn this on and then that'll go into a bottle. So as the seller is demonstrating, that will go in there. And then you want everything to be actually, yeah, that's probably, that's probably enough. So just like that, the bottle and beer. Fun times. <clears throat> so, you don't need to watch us bottle all this beer. So instead, what we're going to do is you just get it right up to the top, and that's the perfect amount. Yep, yeah, right there. It's good. That's good. All right, and we're just going to set this over to the side, and we're going to bottle the rest of the beers. Uh, all of these have been sanitized, like we said just a few minutes ago. So. Many tic tacs later. Finet. So let's see how many we got. Three, six, nine, ten, 
9, 12, 15, no, I lost count, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 51 bottles. Not quite 52, but it's good enough. It's a little bit more than the states in the U.S. Um, but yeah, that's it. So we have a patron. Patreon. All right, let me start that over. Maybe stand over. All right, so that's 51 bottles, and that's all out of five gallons. This is going to be fun to drink. Um, you know, next you'll see me drinking it and talking about it, I'm sure. Um, but... <sighs> One eternity later. All right, so we're back. And um, it's been a little bit later. Uh, roughly late December <laughs> since we bottled this. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, that's about four weeks later. Um, I've given some of these away to friends. I don't know how they like it. But that was carbonation. Casella can't drink this, so I'm going to give tasting notes. Um, the glass was provided by my friend Inga, who um, gave it to me as a gift. She's in Germany, so shout out to Inga for the glass. Um, but there is the Russian Imperial Stout. It's lightly carbonated, um, and it smells very caramel. You want to smell it? Mm -hmm. Casella is going to try the Jelly Belly Draft and the Jelly Belly Bubbly because this is coming out right before New Year's. So I'm going to try to open this one. Uh, I can't get it open. There it goes. So I'm going to take one out too. I'm going to try one. That one's not, not, not cooperating. Mm -hmm. I need to pop it off. Use my man hands. There we go. It was a little bit less. Um, all right, so the bubbly is the clear one. The draft is the uh, golden one. So first I'm going to take a sip of the beer. So it's a little bit bitter. Um, a little bit more bitter than I would have wanted it to be. But the bitterness works really well with that, really well with that extra... Um, sugar that I put in it and it didn't like properly get eaten by the yeast um, so it's um, it's a very well balanced if not a lower alcohol by volume for an imperial stout uh, it's got some nice caramel notes and the, the hops do give a kind of it's not not really piney but um, like something like a like like the smell that you get from like a fresh pine forest uh, it's hard to explain uh, but there's a nice mouthfeel to it, too. All in all, this is the best beer I've made, so or we've made. <laughs> so I'm happy with it. Yeah, and thanks for the glass, Inga. So um, what do you think? What do you think about the draft? You want to do the draft first? Go ahead and take it, taste it. Tell me what it tastes like, because I have no idea yet. You look like you might be unimpressed. Doesn't taste like beer at all. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like sweet and caramel, right? Honey. Honey, yeah. Um, not a bad Jelly Belly flavor. Um, kind of tastes like um, honey and a Cooper. There's a Cooper. All right, let's try the bubbly. I like that one better. So what do you think of it? I like this one better. You like the honey one better? Mm -hmm. I like this one because it has like a little bit of a citrus flavor to it. But I do like honey. So there's some good good stuff happening with the honey one. Um, yeah, all in all, 
good beer. Jelly Bellies, okay Jelly Bellies. I've had some other Jelly Bellies, like the Cranberry Jelly Belly, that I kind of prefer. Um, what do you think? You like this one best. Mm -hmm. That's the draft one. Why don't you like this one as much? More weird taste? Beer. Beer tastes like you think it tastes more like beer? Wine. Something, something like that. It tastes a little bit more like weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that. Well, I mean, it is supposed to be like champagne. So, there we go. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. This has been uh, the kind of New Year's Eve episode of The Accidental Brewer. Um, and. We're going to catch you next time. I'm not going to say all the stuff about Patreon, but if you want to subscribe to us, please subscribe. Hit that bell. We'd love to have that happen. Uh, otherwise, Happy New Year, and we hope that 2021 is so much less of a crap show than 2020 was. Um, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next year.